Hi, this is Aaron with Zolo Tech. Today I have the best skins ever installed for the iPhone 3G. Now a lot of people have watched just the simple unboxing, and I thought I'd bring you through installing it. I've cleaned up the back of the iPhone as best I could. It does have a few little nicks here and there, and Apple did replace it for me a while back with a refurbished one, so I'm assuming maybe there was some from that. But overall it looks pretty good. Um, here is the skin for the back. And I'll try and bring, or you know, get the whole video in here, but uh, I have to keep it under about 10 minutes, and this may go a little longer than that, but you'll get the general idea. So first let me show you. I just have a uh, paper towel down here. I do have a screen protector on there until I put the front piece on. You want to shut off your device, um, just in case water gets in. I'm a little crazy about that, as you saw with the Zag install on the MacBook. So... What I'm going to do is do the best I can to keep water off of this, as I'm sure all of you would want to do. So what you start with is Zag sends you a little bottle of solution. This is the same solution, basically. Uh, what you want to do is you put a quarter teaspoon of dish soap, mild dish detergent, or baby soap is even better. And that's what I've used here, as I have kids. And I've uh, got some baby soap and about a cup and a quarter of water and uh, wait for the bubbles to dry. Then you want to wash your hands and after you've washed your hands, got your iPhone all clean, then what we can do is, if you have a spray bottle it's even better, uh, but this will work. What you want to do is wet your fingertips. You also want to, you can actually bring this through, this is just like an old Cool Whip container or something. Um, I found in the cupboard that uh, my wife had kept, so I figured, you know, I can throw it out if I need to or whatever. So what we're going to do is peel this off of here. Let me wet my fingertips here. I'm going to peel this off here. You want to remember which side's the sticky side. And what you do is you're going to dip this into the solution and put it on the phone. You do not want to apply you don't want to apply this directly, the water, directly onto the phone. And with the MacBook installation, this is pretty straightforward. So we want to find the top. This is the top. You can see, I don't know if you can see that against my finger, but there is a little bit of a cutout for the, for the, um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, headphone jack. So let me slide this into view a little better. We'll dip this in the water. I'm going to shake off the excess. They said you don't need it dripping wet, you just need it a little moist. And I found that to be true with the, apologize for the camera shake a little bit here, but um, I did find that with the, um, I'll let it drip onto there. I found it with, to be true with the Zag on the MacBook too. You can actually move it around, it's, it's very uh, slippery once it's on. So you can see that's laid right over there. And what I'm going to do is, this is going to be a little bit more tricky as it's the iPhone. Now, I don't obviously like water on it, but uh, I actually applied it upside down. So, there we go. So, we don't want water on it, but that's why I have this to catch most of it. So, let me go ahead. Now, it will evaporate and get more sticky. So, what we want to do is line it up the best we can and then smooth it out, smooth all the water out that we can. And cost-wise, now the Zag I'm not saying is a bad product by any means, this feels just like it. Um, the cost difference is significant though. So I'm just going to leave it like this for a minute, and uh, I'll come back when it's ready to stick all these corners on. It does take a few minutes to evaporate. As you can see, the back's pretty well flat. There's some micro air bubbles, and usually those go away. It's got like a little ripple to the skin. You can kind of see that. Um, the corners, these aren't done yet. You have to push these air bubbles out just like this. I've found that the trim of the actual skin is a little bit difficult to get up to this edge. You kind of have to stretch it a little bit and wait for it to hold. I had to re-wet a few parts of it. And you can see we fold these corners over like that. Like this one's pretty well set, but there's an air bubble right there, so we just push it out. This corner is pretty well set on there, 
and you can see the cutout this is all usable and fine um, you can see the ripples along here it's nicely lined up with the edge and then as we get down here this has been giving me a little bit of a hassle is the cutout is a not I'm not gonna say it's not perfect uh, but it's just difficult to get this down and around and lined up perfectly so that the speaker and the microphone are exposed and uh, same deal over here so what I've done is um, occasionally when you when you need to you can make uh, a little bit of a uh, get a dab of water put it on and, and re-wet it and you can kind of reset what you've done if you make a little bit of a mistake I'm gonna tell you you do need to be a little bit more patient with this install than uh, a larger device like a MacBook because here you're dealing with smaller finer corners and what you can do to get some of these to stick is you can just take this in your palm like that and hold the heat from your palm will not only kind of set it but help to evaporate some of that water uh, that's built up in there you can just leave it like this for a moment and it'll come out and uh, kind of set you can see you've got a little bit of a, a space but that's just to make room for the corner and you want to be up you want to make sure this is uh, on the corner properly and slid around here it is a little bit of a uh, pain uh, no doubt about that, but it takes some patience, and if you've got patience to do this, uh, it's worth spending time, because once it's on here, you really don't need a case. Um, it will fit in a case, but you don't need one, aside from this. Um, and it it's, makes it really nice, because then you've got your normal iPhone, you've got a grippy surface, and because it is... Uh, like a vinyl, it's more grippy than the slippery iPhone is, and... Um, that's it. So I'm going to finish up this back part, then we'll do the front. This has just got a, a normal screen protector on there. You can see a bubble right there. I'm just going to pull it up, put the new one on, and uh, see what it looks like, and I'll be back with Overall, I've got the front skin. I'm going to wet my fingers here, peel this off. Now I will say, to get this going, the back part does require a lot of stretching. It takes quite a while. Um, I don't know, must have been, it's about taking me a half an hour. If you're patient, it won't be bad. You just have to take your time. It is, uh, if, if you're not patient, I don't recommend getting one, but if you are patient, it's worth it because this back, now I can just set it down. It's not going to slide. It's not going to scratch anything. Really nice. You know, obviously that's what you want. You don't want to have to worry about your phone. You know, when you have a cheat phone, you just throw it down or set it down on a counter. Nobody really cares, usually. And um, when you have a phone that costs as much as the iPhone, um, doesn't have a good warranty plan, to be honest. You know, it's okay, but if you break it, you're in trouble. Um, you know, with uh, with some other carriers I've had, you can just... You know, if you break it, you get insurance on your phone, five bucks a month or whatever they charge, and you're good to go. So you can see I've got this going on here already. It is a little bit off-center. And while it's still wet, it's a good time to make sure your fingers are still wet. You can slide it around or whatever you need to do. Get it right where you want it. And then you can start squeezing the air bubbles out. So I'll get... You, you guys get that. There's actually a cover for the button here. And... Um, that's pretty much it for installation. I like to wipe this down so I don't get water in the uh, speakerphone. There's actually a sensor, not a sensor, but a um, it's basically litmus paper in the top where the SIM card is. Uh, when I had this replaced, you know, they look at it to make sure there's no water damage, and they pull it out. There's actually a dot on there, a white dot, um, and if it's been wet, you know. So I'm not 100% positive I'm going to keep the front on here, just because I've mentioned that before. I'm not crazy about things on the front cover, uh, but we'll try it out for a day or so uh, after it dries and see how it goes. Uh, you know, with all the bubbles and the things the rippling, uh, it might be a little annoying. This went on really easy. Not hard at all. It's like putting a normal screen cover on, and you see these little air bubbles here. You squish these out with your, your fingers or thumb. Um, and, and as this gets drier, it gets tacky, but you can see those ripples uh, that's in the light above me here. Um, you can kind of see them. Let me see, maybe that's better. I don't know. But um, we'll see what happens after a day or two. I've been told you can use a little bit of a trick from a um, 
hair dryer and I, I did that a little bit on the back to make this more tacky and stick. It seemed to work uh, just to kind of evaporate some of that water. So that's the front of it. That's the installation. I'll use it for a few days and uh, we'll see how it goes and I'll let you know what I think.